thing you want to do is find out what keywords you want to use for your blog post. To do this, I use the um, Google AdWords keywords tool. Let me open this up in an, a new tab here. The Google AdWords uh, keyword tool external is a free service that lets you find the best keywords to use for your search terms. So I know I want to write about Boston Terriers, so I'm going to search for Boston Terriers. And I'm also going to enter the CAPTCHA. And it will give you keyword ideas and search results. And if I can type this CAPTCHA right, I might get my results. Okay, so I do a search, uh, let's do a search for Boston Terriers, and here's what I get. The word Boston Terrier gets 823,000 searches in December, and it has a global monthly search of 673,000. That's a very heavily searched term. You'll see green here means that there's a lot of advertiser competition, which means if you were to list this keyword Boston Terrier, you would not likely show up in the first page of the search engine rankings. This is because it's a very highly used search. You do still want to use it because if you AdSense your blog, you get higher cost per click by using high value keywords like this. So you still want to use it, you just don't want to uh, you make it your only one. What you want to do is you want to search for advertiser competition and sort by lowest to highest. You want to look for things with under 1,000 or 5,000 searches. Look for searches that have low results. These are the ones where your blog will, will stand very high in the search ratings. Like Boston Terrier's adoption which has only 1,300 a month, 1,000, has relatively low competition. So if you're going to mention adoption of Boston Terriers in your article, you might want to use this keyword and add it to your article uh, because you'll stand out in the search engines. You have a higher chance of being on the first listing. And then here's Terriers Boston. Just to play on Boston Terriers in reverse, it gets 110,000 searches but it's not very highly used. That's an excellent one to use for your blog post because it gets over 100,000 searches. It's not super competitive, so that's another one I would use for your blog post. And so that's what you would do. You would leverage looking at the keywords here. Um, if you see under like 100, you know what, there's not really any reason to do those because there's not enough monthly search traffic to really be worth it. However, if you see global search volume of 500 to 1,000 and you add 10 or 15 of those keywords, you can really capitalize on getting some traffic just by choosing some underutilized keywords and under uh, competing keywords. And throw a mix in there. Have between 10 and 20 keywords on every single blog post that you really want to publish. I wouldn't put over 20 keywords because that would be keyword spamming, but I definitely would put a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 20 for each blog post you do. One other thing to note is lowercase letters on Google are treated differently than uppercase. If you were to write Boston Terriers with the letters B and T in, in capitals, you will see an entirely different set of searches and results. So one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to also... Uh, leverage mixing capital letters uh, for for names or for titles or companies because some people do searches for capital letters and you will capitalize on searches uh, by using capital letters. Now most people type lowercase letters but for so typically when you search for a capital letter you'll tend to get better listings because not as many people keyword for doing capital letters in their keywords. But if you do a search for Boston Terriers on Google, and I'll show you right now an example, if I do a search for Boston Terrier, in the lower lowercase, you'll see 1,630,000 results for Boston Terrier, a wiki comes up first, American Kennel Club, etc. But now if I do a search for Boston Terrier in capital letters, you'll see 1,620,000 results, which is actually 10,000 less results than the lowercase Boston Terrier. You see, it was 1.630 million for Boston Terrier, and it was only, it was 10,000 less for the capital Boston Terrier. So a lot of people are capitalizing in this case, but if you were to put Terriers Boston You'll see 1.3 million for Terriers Boston. And 
and that happens to be the same as well. But if I, one thing you might want to do is add questions to your searches too. Like, what is Boston Terrier? By putting questions in your post, you also can have uh, better search rankings because a lot of people, when they search on Google, they'll search a single keyword, but you're seeing a rise in, in question type terms on Google. Like, what is a Boston Terrier? Why get a Boston Terrier? Why Boston Terrier? Or does a Boston Terrier make a good pet? Things like that. You want to capitalize on those searches as best as possible. Capture the entire search term in your SEO, in your tags. That way you improve your rankings with that specific ter search term and you match all the words in the search term. See, if you only match one or two words of a search term, you're not going to rank as high as if you matched every single word in that search term. So you do want to leverage uh, entire search patterns too, like uh, Boston Terriers as pets. What are Boston Terriers? Why choose Boston Terrier? One other thing you want to do is, and sometimes I do this, is a lot of people typo things, especially complicated words, right? So if you know a word has a, a tendency to be misspelled, include the misspelled version of the word too, and you may, and you can get additional search traffic just by leveraging all the people who who do a typo. Now it's really not easy to spell Boston, uh, you know, not hard to misspell Boston Terriers, but. So I wouldn't have a recommendation for this specific search term. But if I were to do a, a search for something else, uh, I would potentially put in one or two misspellings or common misspellings just to see what's out there. And do some Google searches yourself for terms and see what works for you or what comes back. Leverage using those own search terms yourself. You can also visit any website that that has what the you know the same topic or category. And you could always view source on the website. Oh, this one actually blocks you. That's pretty clever. But you could always, uh, in most cases, right-click and view page source on, a, on another website and look for keywords. You'll see that this place only does one meta keyword, Boston Terrier Rescue, nothing else. Now, that's not really leveraging uh, meta keywords very well. They're only capitalizing on a single keyword. But what I would do is when you see sites is have at least 10 keywords, make sure your meta name keywords shows up uh, with as many combinations as possible. And that will increase and improve the SEO and search results for your website. That's basically all the information you have. Uh, this is how you use the all-in-one SEO pack and how to leverage choosing the best SEO keywords for your site. Again, I'm still a blogger learning. I'm not an SEO master expert. I learn every month new tips, new tricks, and new tactics. This is just what I do so far, and this is what accounts for most of my search results. Again, 74% of my blog traffic comes from Google search results, so this method does work well for me. It, it's kept me getting good traffic from Google searches, and uh, hopefully this method will work for you too. Thanks for watching the video.